so um, now um, so what I decided was um, I wanted to give I wanted to use this webinar as a foundation course uh, for optics and give the best um, what do you call the best bricks and motors so that you can use that to build something very you know uh, very advanced so the basics I'm planning to cover um, are some of the things that you'll be seeing in today and also in the coming webinars so today's webinar mostly I'm focusing on three key words so you can say like these three are like are primarily very very important keywords when and there is no optical imaging without these keywords that is a lens so you cannot have an optical imaging without a lens you cannot do an optical imaging without a focus and you don't have an optical imaging if there is no convergence so the second term the focus is somewhat you know it's like a 50 50 scenario because uh, we say that an object is in focus and in out of focus and out of focus you still get an image just that you cannot read any information out of it but whereas for uh, uh, you know in focus is what is desired because that gives a very detailed sharp image with a lot of information good so i um, um, in this uh, three realms of optical imaging I want to cover uh, four, I, I will be talking about four of these things. The first one is what is light in terms of optics? So um, light has like three definitions. So before we get into the slides, so the light is having three definitions. The one is the light is a Newtonian definition. That is a Newton's laws, a light which is based on Newton's law. The second is the light is based on Quantonian mechanics. That is the light which follows the quantum principles. And the third one is the light which is following the electrom and maxwell equations so the light that we all know you all if, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure every participant in this um, mm -hmm. uh, webinar knows what a light is right so if i ask you a light if you will have definitely you will have a lot of things to talk about light so but coming to this lecture today uh, and these three most accepted definitions are from Newton's law, Maxwell's law, and um, the quantum laws. So these are the definitions which give you know very clear um, indication about light. And now for light to be used in optics. So whenever we are talking about light's use in optics, we are talking about Maxwell's light. Okay, so Maxwell's light theorem is the lights are electromagnetic waves. So that is what we will be using in optics along with some modifications. So we are not fully, you know, we have to slightly change it a bit to design our cameras and use the light in building a camera. So we are going to see that. So that is the first topic, what, how light is defined in optics. So the second topic that we are going to talk about is the lens properties based on the shape. So you all have seen, like, you know, if you are, if you have lens, when I say lens, you know that uh, I, I am pretty sure, like, if I ask you what is the shape of a lens, you'll be telling me that it's round, okay, or it's oval, or it's circle. I have seen a lens, okay, so that is correct. That is one, one, one of the shape is mostly the lens are oval, or we can say spherical, uh, that is the exact word that we will be using. Spherical cut lenses are the most widely used lenses. But there are also other shapes okay so there are ellipse there are parabola there is a, a sphere there is circle so we are going to see what are these uh, shapes and how these what are, why do we need these shapes because they have certain properties mostly geometric properties so you all know that a circle has a radius a diameter a area and a circumference all in formulas a equal to pi r square uh, c is equal to 2 pi r so all these formulas are known to us so we are going to see what how lens properties are defined based on their shapes the third one is the focusing mechanism so what is focus in imaging so we all know a focus is an object is in focus means it looks good when an object is an out of focus it looks blurry it looks hazy so that is the definition of focus that we know but we are going to talk about in terms of lens and today's topic of optical imaging what is focus then the fourth topic that i'm going to talk to you is the convergence of light so that is more like uh, um, 
guiding the light so the light just like you know the lights are traveling and we have to make sure that they reach certain destinations inside our optical imaging or inside our camera in order to have a feasible working prototype good because the convergence understanding the convergence of light is very very important in building any cameras so these four are the i would say like they are like the primary fundamentals that is needed for anyone pursuing a research in optical image so now let's get into each of these uh, sections and we'll see the details so the first uh, topic is about light in optics so uh, what we need to understand so these are uh, primarily you know it's intended for every, uh, whoever is listening must be able to understand so without too much um, uh, technicality we are talking so i would say a light is a can be a bright light or a dim light okay so we have something called as a bright light and when i am telling a light is bright it just means there are too many photons that are reaching us okay so the too many photons are coming to us and when i am talking the light is dim i just have few photons coming to me so why i have put it in this shape because what is the shape of the photon it is i you know you know this doesn't represent the shape of the photons okay so what is the shape of the these represents photon bundle so each of these oval thing here represents a bunch of photons or a group of photons and that is how light reaches you that is all that is how light travels so in optics this becomes very important because we need to know how the light behaves so the definition that we are going to take the the assumption the, for modeling the cameras is light consists of a bright light is a continuous signal or a continuous process because these are samples if you talk talk about these as excuse me these as photon sample one second probably people are uh, having lunch and uh, maybe just uh, coming in all are welcome it's not a problem so a bright light is continuous and whereas a dim light is a discrete that is one thing but that assumption is not very that's not very you know do we need it no but do we need to you know it's worth knowing it but the second and third definition of light is very very important so now if you see light travels in straight line that is the first norm of deviation from maxwell's theory so maxwell claims that uh, light is an electromagnetic wave so a wave whenever i'm saying wave just imagine the ripples or the waves of the ocean so you all know that waves propagate you know the the ocean consists of waves and these waves are not straight they are like wavy right they are not <laughs> anything other than being straight but the norm that we are going to follow is the light travel in a straight line even though see that there is a there is a catch even though they are an electromagnetic wave so what is the, this means so you are telling it is a wave and it is a straight line at the same time so this is like a quantonian thing quantum also has certain um, this kind of uh, contradictory things why why light is uh, said to travel in a straight line because the velocity of light is too fast right 3 into 10 to the power of 8 uh, meters per second so that is the velocity of the light so the light travels so fast so the light can go around the circumference you know if, if you take an earth our our planet earth as a circle the light can travel from one point it can go around the earth and come to the same point in uh, one tenth of a uh, no not one i'm i'm just it's very few second you know i just i was remembering sometime back it is like um, some some but it is very fast so it will just go and come in like a jiffy so that is the speed of the light so even though light is a wave and um, we are using that wave for our optical imaging or cameras but uh, to design such optical uh, designs we have to use the uh, this thing okay so we have to use the assumption that the lights travel in a straight line so that is going to be the design criteria so whatever lens that whatever cameras that we are going to design in the coming webinars 
I'll be using the definition to very uh, follow it very stringently. So the third um, definition is the image is directly affected by the wavelength of light. This is also very very important. So for image to come out nicely on the camera, you need a wavelength factor. So how these two? So we'll come. I uh, will talk more on the third point in the next uh, slide. So how this uh, wavelength and how this straight line phenomena is going to help us, or it's going to be a factor uh, that we have to consider when we are designing cameras for optical image. Okay, so to understand the points two and three that have uh, that was shown before, uh, we are going to perform a small experiment. So an experiment which has been proven study, it is a proven study. So the experiment is this. So what I have here is a hole. So I have I take a black cardboard. So the color of the I'm, I'm calling it black because the light cannot penetrate any anywhere through the cardboard except through inside this hole. Okay, so. I keep it in the path of the light. So let us say I have a candle or a torch. Something is, you know, some kind of a bright light source is here. And now I keep it in the path of the light. And then what I see is the light. I get an image. So if I keep a sensor, so now we are only talking about an uh, outside experiment, not inside camera. So let us say this is just a white paper. So it can be a white paper, but in reality, this has to be an imaging sensor. So you will see what I'm telling you. Know, you will see an image of this object on your sensor. Okay, good. So and what I meant, the, and uh, the second criteria is satisfied because the lights are traveling in straight line, and the images are getting formed. Okay, and they are converging. So the convergence will come next. So the focus is there. So when I say what is a, a straight path, this is the straight path and arrow. Because you may ask, it is coming from this side, that side. There are angles everywhere it is not horizontal it's not vertical so what do you mean by straight when i say straight it can come at any angle it doesn't matter as long as it's not bent like this so this is a not straight path and these are all straight path okay so now image is captured fully on sensor the first one is it is a straight path and the second point is the wavelength so the wavelength of the light is smaller than the diameter of the aperture. Right? So what it means is the light wavelength, the diameter of the aperture is the size of this hole. So the size of the aperture and the wavelength. So the wavelength of the light should be. So if this condition is satisfied, okay, because the wavelength of, when I say wavelength of light, okay, very careful. You, you may think, uh, so wavelength of light, velocity of light is high, wavelength of light, what it is. So uh, what I meant to say here is your light is in the visible range because it's an electro in electromagnetic spectrum. We have plenty of frequencies. So your light is in the visible range. And this visible range light is what is being compared with this D. So which means the lambda less than and less than or equal to D means it is quite achievable. So you may ask if lambda is too big, you know, or too, how it can be achieved, or it is too small, how it can be achieved. Yes, there are because we are talking in visible. So always this uh, lecture and all the uh, pro, uh, all the research uh, talks that we are considering are only for imaging in the visible range. So in the visible range, the wavelengths are very you know comparable, and this is very much achievable. Okay, lambda less than or less than d can be achieved. And what is the other case? The other case is where the lambda is greater than or equal to D. Right. So this is 
in that case what happens is when this aperture is small or this condition is not satisfied and we have the other conditions that is lambda greater than the diameter and lambda equal to the diameter and what happens is the light rays just don't reach the yeah, just don't reach the sensor to form your image where the light has to so that is your convergence factor okay so uh, focus we have not the focus is the uh, is still there but now i'm i've talked about what is light in optics and now i'm telling why convergence is very very important so for every time you need to have a convergence this is very much needed this is a mandate you need to have this condition satisfied in all your cameras when you do the computation and when you do the design computation you need to calculate this you have to make sure that this is adequate then you can you know send the uh, lights through your camera and then you will get a nice picture else you will not get a picture so that is your convergence you know, today's topic is about lens focus and convergence all right good now uh, this is just optical image not capture next uh, light travel through optical image so we have already said light travels in straight path okay the light travels in the straight line and that is something is given now what uh, we are going to see here is few more things okay so this is your typical lens there can be multiple lenses used in an imaging system but throughout uh, this lecture we are only talking about single lens imaging system so you have a single lens and this is a light ray so the light is penetrating this lens and it is going in a straight path okay good and now i'm going to call this area is your outside camera and this side is inside your camera and also the medium is very important because here it is a air and here plastic now the lenses are not made of glasses anymore so they are made out of fiber carbon plastic so they are made of this plastic and then again you have air here so uh, this is a rare medium i'm going to call it a dense medium right plastic is a thick medium this is a thin medium okay, okay good so this is uh, some these are all the things we have to consider and now what is the first thing i'm going to do is whenever a light goes from a rare medium to a dense medium and back to a rare medium there is a change in the speed of light so light travels slow in water we have studied the snell's law right it is called as snell's law in uh, high school math uh, high school physics we have we should have all have learned so it is the same thing so but we have to put in we have to put in that factor when we are designing an optical imaging system so which means the light travels from the air through the plastic and back through the air and it reaches the sensor so here is where you keep the image sensor so here is where your image is recorded when you click on the camera when you press click on the camera this will record something here so and that recording happens in this direction so what will happen is we have to put in the factor so we have to consider the factor that the velocity of the light if v1 is the velocity of light outside camera and v2 is the velocity of light inside camera your v1 is always going to be greater than v2 okay by how much that is your design goal so now you have this is just one lens and if i have a refractive index so we'll come to that that is the most important derivation of today's class so we we can compute what will be the velocity of the light inside the camera so i have two lenses i have three lenses then i can easily compute what will be you know when, whenever the light passes through each of this lens its velocity is going to reduce by a small fraction so how much is the velocity getting reduced and if i know that uh, factor what will happen i know exactly where to keep the paper or where to keep the sensor that will record the image good because the goal is to get a very good image on your sensor so now when the light travels through different lenses its velocity is going to change it's going to slow down which means it will converge to some place uh, which is not uniform it because the depending on the lens material lens uh, number of lenses the lens uh, 
uh, uh, distance between the lens, all that will you know will come. So depending on a lot of factors, this velocity, this v1 and v2 will vary. So we have to compute in the we have to compute how much it's going to vary and where that uh, sensor, where that image will fall on the sensor. Okay, so that is your v1 greater than v2. Okay, so that is the first point we have to take uh, into consideration when we are designing our optical image. And this is also useful because we can design, okay, I'll come to that. Um, next is the focus in optical imaging. So let me draw the same diagram. Now we are going to, so I've, I've talked about this velocity difference and how the, uh, how computing it will help in getting a best uh, convergence and also placing the sensor at the right place. The next thing we are having is the focus in optical imaging. Okay, the focus is in optical imaging, what it means. So here, the set, everything is the same. This is outside camera, this is inside camera, and then the lights travel in straight line. So I'm keeping an object here. So what you see here, this is an object, and then, um, what what will happen here is whenever the light travels in straight line from the object and it reaches the lens so the lens is going to do what it's gonna reflect it uh, it's gonna send it through okay it's gonna reflect and it's gonna or it's or it's gonna allow the light to pass through we want we want the light to pass through it because we want the, our sensor is kept at this side. So the light has to get through the lens and reach here. So in order to study what happens inside the camera, we can study what it is, what it means is because of symmetry in digital signal processing in many places, you know, in, in communication systems, you know how symmetry holds. So we have symmetry and we have asymmetry. So this is a symmetrical system. Your optical systems are mostly symmetric, which means whatever we are going to show here can just be duplicated or it will be happening at the same locations on this side of your camera. Good. So what happens on the left hand side also holds true in terms of the distance and other things for the right hand side. So now the first thing I did was a ray comes here, then it is getting reflected. And second one is a ray which is going in a straight line, but it is going through this point also on the lens and it is again getting reflected. Now, the meeting point of this diagonal line and this, this diagonal blue line and this horizontal green line is your image. Okay, so this is your object and this is what is called as the focal point. So it is not distance, it is focal point. This is your image. And I'm just saying symmetry. So I'm going to extend the symmetry to this place. So in your camera, your image will be formed here. So this is inside the camera. So how I'm going to project it for symmetry is I'm going to take this line. Then I'm going to draw horizontal here. And now if you see, you, you have seen this uh, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection that is what you see here right theta i equal to theta r something like that so here and this is the lens so this this property i'll tell in the next slide so this is how your images form inside the camera we can rotate it because you, you may say it is inverted now there are mechanism there are you know you can plug in another lens that will easily rotate it and give you an upright image so that that and all is very um, that is all very possible but now we are only focused on what is focus. So what is the uh, definition of uh, focus? Focal point is all the ray, all the, whenever the light passes through the lens. So whenever the light is falling on a lens. So what is lens? The lens is something that will allow the light to pass through or get reflected upon. So that is your lens. So uh, mirror. So there is a there is a the distinction between lens and a mirror. A mirror is something where we call it as a silver coating. So a mirror is having some kind of silver coating, and it will be fully 100% it reflect back the light rays. 
Okay, so that is your um, Okay, so that is your uh, mirror. And now lens is what? What is the lens? When, when, I, when I talk about lens, then lens will be something that allows, you know, it, it does both. It reflects and also it transmits. And uh, that is mostly the angle of incidence and angle of reflection, refraction, all that. All that is possible. So now what I'm talking here is the focal point. So whenever the lens we are using, then all the lens that we use in optical imaging or the lenses that go into camera follow this principle. So whenever the light reaches, light reaches in a straight line, light comes in a straight line and falls on the lens, it will direct the lens inside our cameras, will direct it to the focus point. Any straight line that is parallel to this, let us say this is the principal axis, any straight line parallel to the principal axis will get converged at the focus point. Will get converged to this focus. Another rule of our lens is whenever a light falls, light passes through this focal point. So here, this is also a straight line. I told angle doesn't matter. What is a straight path and not a straight path we have discussed. So this is also a straight line and this is passing through this focal point. And whenever such thing happens, so here, whenever the a straight light ray passes through the focal point and then reaches the lens, so it is passing through the focal point and it is managing to reach the lens, it gets what? It gets directed parallelly. So here, the lens is directing your light parallelly. So it's very simple. When a, when a, when a, when a horizontal light falls on the lens, it gets diverted diagonally. And when a diagonal light falls on the lens, it gets diverted horizontally. Good. So this is the principle. This is the mechanism for all the camera lenses that you will see uh, in the coming up webinar. So next webinar, we are going to show some real simulation on the software uh, with these principles. So I'm going to show all this on the computer, how we can do. So that will also be interesting to see how these uh, uh, focusing happens. So the uh, light when incident on lens, always converges to focal point f good when light goes through f and so when light goes through the focal point f and falls on the lens it gets sent parallelly okay so this is the two kind of uh, uh, intuition things we need you know we need this is this will hold for all this assumption they, of course, if you ask, uh, is there any change to this? You know, if there is any way this can? Yes. Depending on the build of the lens, we can have a lens which is built, which will go at 2F. You know, if you want to have a lens which will uh, divert the light to 2F, then that also is possible. So this is something that, you know, depending on how we build. So we are, uh, what we are doing is, Uh, for our designs, we are going to use this. This assumption is of what is given in the textbook also. So I was I was using this uh, interesting book on optics. I have shared it in the group also. So that is a, that is the book I have taken these contents from. So that is this. These are the assumptions they are using for designing optical imaging for cameras. Okay, in the camera lens system. So this is how you define. So here both your focus and convergence is mentioned. So here, if you see, the focal point is where the light converges. So they are both the same. So the convergence point and your focal point is the same. And when it passes in diagonal, it just gets diverted. So this is very, very, very important slide uh, and very, very useful when we design lenses. So the next thing we are going to talk about is the focus equation. So a very simple equation um, we will do, but this is not the equation we are interested in. So we are going to be interested in another equation that we'll be seeing also in today's lecture. So I've told you how an image forms. This is how your object and image forms. Now, so this is the distance u that is called as the object distance. V is called as the image distance. So this is inside camera, this is outside camera. F is your focal point. The standard equation is what you see in a very preliminary optics book is 
or even a physics textbook is 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by f. Okay, so this equation is what you see. And now we will just do a small analysis on this equation. But can you tell this, this equation is not enough for our optical imaging. So when I'm talking about uh, you know, camera lens system or you, we want to build a camera, then this is not enough. Can anyone tell why it is just a guess? Um, I, this is the only question I'll ask the participants. So I will not ask any other questions. So this, this equation is uh, insufficient in uh, many terms. So I would say, so why is that? Any guess? So because yeah. it is given in a distance yeah. at a particular distance of the sun, the initial uh, like mirror object position and the mirror, sir. If you change the position, the object like you won't get a sufficient answer. Sir. Because focal length is only for fixed value, sir. Ah yes. So okay, good. Okay, thank you. So that is partially correct. So what uh, uh, I think Ishan, right? Ishan, is it you? Sir Tanish. Sir. Tanish. Yes, yes. Tanish. Yes. Uh, it is good. Tanishk is um, this uh, just I'm making it uh, who, you know, who, who is from the voice. So, yeah, th what Tanishk said is correct. So there are uh, certain limitation in terms of it's a fixed. Yeah, but why it becomes fixed? So it becomes fixed because there is no uh, flexibility. This equation doesn't offer anything about the lens material. Right. So you want to build, you know, you want to build a camera. So you want to have a lens. So what is the lens specification? So that is not here. It only talks about the distance and the focal point. And the second thing missing in this uh, uh, equation is the refractive index. So we have we have spoken about the velocity v1 and v2. When light travels through different lenses, it slows down and the convergence happens at certain place. So that also have to be, uh, no, it is not always the focal point. So that has to be considered because when you keep a lot of lenses, so at the end of this uh, the demo, at the end of this lecture, I have a demo and that shows a very normal camera system. So a normal mobile phone camera system I have shown. So you can see like there are how many moving, how many lens parts are there. So definitely, so here also, that uh, refractive index, so the velocity of the light is definitely going to change and there is no uh, ways to compute that from this equation. So that is why this equation is uh, not sufficient for our uh, goals of designing an optical imaging system. But we will uh, see some of the features of this equation. The first equation, first feature is what happens when u is infinity. So when I say u is equal to infinity, it means the distance of the object. So the, my object is at infinity. So what does it mean? It just means that object is at a far. It is not something, you know, we can put it on the principal axis. So it's coming from a long distance. So this is what at u equal to infinity means. And u equal to infinity is always good because what happens when u is infinite to this equation? So your equation becomes v equal to f because 1 by infinity is 0. So it becomes 1 by v equal to 1 by f. So which means your object or the, your image will focus on f. So your image will get focused at the focal point. So which means you, you uh, or you can say like u has to be high. No, because infinity is something we don't know. It is, it is not, you know, it is something very big quantity. So you can just say that if u is large, then I am sure that I will have a very focused image. That is, if I keep my sensor here, if I keep my imaging sensor at f, then I'm going to get a very sharp image. So this design or this equation just tells us that. And this is not enough because the velocity is not taken into consideration. So the next point is what happens when u is equal to f? So there are many uh, cases you will go with. I will just, I'm talking about two. There are like five to six cases given in the textbook. You can just go, but these are the two things that we normally encounter in our practical designing process. So the second one is u is equal to f. Okay, so when u equal to f, so this means the object is placed at f. So when the object is placed at f, you tell this 1 by f plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by f. So which means u is equal to f. Then what happens? Your v is now infinity. Good. 1 by v equal to what? 0, v equal to infinity. 
So this will bring your image to infinity. So your image will not be anywhere here. It is going to be at infinity. So what does that mean? So where do we use that concept? So this concept is good. You know, this is what we want. Uh, from a camera perspective, uh, I am very good. I am very happy if I get one all the time. Uh, but even with few design changes, I'll be able to achieve this. And uh, this is good. But two is something you know where the image is formed at infinity, and that is what you know, how how an image is going to be formed at infinity. So this is used. This mechanism is used in your far away telescopic lens, magnification lens, mostly on convex lenses convex lenses where the magnification gets big and this major infinity because we need to then project it uh, project a virtual image so those are the cases so this is like normal cameras we can say this for like microscopes telescopes etc we will be talking about this virtual image so we will not at, at, at this point we will not be covering this so we will be because here, what happens is you keep the specimen. So you know where to keep the specimen. You keep the specimen at u equal to f. And then uh, you get an image at infinity. And that the image at infinity is not magnification. So that is, again, you know, to be very clear, it is not magnification. It is just that the image is at infinity. And when I project that image to a very far distance, then definitely I am going to zoom the size. So the size is also, it's going to just get bigger and bigger and that is your magnification okay so that is what it, it is like correlated the distance and the magnification so that is what this is used for and this is one so this is the focus equation that we have so uh, we can uh, so which means these are the two extremes when u is infinity and when u equal to f so our uh, designs so when you want to write one paper when you want to do some uh, research and publish it you can just plug and play you know plays with these distances and see interesting uh things you can know interesting results if you get you can very well uh, publish them so that is what uh, we and mostly uh, what this tells is that when if we know where the object is so if we are able to tell uh, measure the object then we will be able to tell the other parameters this equation okay so not much so that much is good for that slide so now we will come to this slide 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f so this is the limitations i told so the equations that is given here 1 by u plus 1 by v equal to 1 by f has a definite limitations as you know so the first one is the refractive index of the lens is not used so which means the velocity difference the velocity outside the camera and the inside of the camera are assumed to be same which is not Okay, which is very maybe for a very simple uh, one one lens it will hold, but not for advanced cameras. And the, the second one is the effect of lens curvature is also not considered. So I am I, I keep drawing these as the lenses throughout this lecture, and there is always uh, no this curvature can also be designed right. It has to be designed. And you know uh, how bifocal, even our specs, our glasses work, right? The powers associated with that. So that has something to do with the curvature. So they, uh, so the same way. So is the, how, how you have a power specification for your glasses, the same way these curvatures also can be controlled, can be designed for better sharp images. So just like our eyeglasses, how we wear them and we get a very clear uh, view of uh, things. So the same thing. Okay. So now we'll see this, how this equation is not enough and we need the, we need to have more, uh, more than this equation. So this one by U plus one by V is equal to one by F is not sufficient. And we are going to see how to improvise on that equation. So first let us see the curvature properties of the lens. Okay. So. A concave lens, this is what a concave lens, parallel, it will it will converge to the focal point. So we have seen a convex lens, what it does is it diverges, but we have to project it to this, uh, using the symmetry, we have to project it, just this much is enough. We are only talking about the basic properties. Now, these two are important, the ellipse and parabola. Why ellipsoids and parabolas are important because every time uh, we are designing a lens I'll, I'll, I'll show you so what is the property of ellipse 
so if you have studied ellipse in geometry there are this is very important property the ellipse says that wherever you keep you, know, you take two points and you draw one line here and you draw one line here and you no know, anywhere between this d1 and d2 will be the same sorry d1 plus d2 will be the same so the points are fixed so what is the condition here the points are fixed so and from that point you draw a line to the ellipse and then from the ellipse you draw another line to that second point and you can draw this in any manner so you can draw it down you know you can draw like this i'm just showing two examples here you can draw it in this manner so when in whatever the points have to be fixed that is the only thing so here we can say that our object is fixed our first point is our object and our second point is our image so you you may say you may say sir what we are our object is not inside an ellipse no i'm just saying this is this is just to translate it to inside the camera we can definitely do that so it just means that d1 plus d2 is the same so here also d1 plus d2 is the same and this is a very important property of ellipse so this gives us a lot of control in designing your lens so the next is the parabola so what is the geometric feature of parabola that will help us in optics so in parabola what it says is take a fixed point take a fixed point which is going through this parabola right and then draw one line to here one line to the surface from this point and then draw a horizontal line okay now what it it has to be perpendicular this this line has to be perpendicular from this then what it says what this um, parabola wants So the parabola condition is that d1 will be equal to d2. Okay, d1 will be equal to d2. So this is one of the conditions of parabola. So these ellipses and this parabola are satisfying. So we have to put a plane here. So we may ask that d2 is not ending, so which means it can go to infinity. Yes, correct. But normally we keep a plane. So we are talking about imaging system. so let us say there is a sensor here or there is an object here so if an object is here and the light is coming from this which means we can just we can directly say that if it falls here this d1 is equal to t i have to put something here so that is what it means and it also applies to the image side it applies to both outside and inside your camera so this is a geometric property so this is not something related relevant to optics it is already existing in the geometry the d1 plus d2 is always a constant it's always same for any two fixed points inside an ellipse and also for parabola the projection from a point on the horizontal is the same as the perpendicular drawn from the parabola so these two conditions are very useful in our lens curvature these are the only thing right so they are using um, one other design is ellipse parabola and sphere so these are the three cuts normally we use for cameras for building the lenses of our cameras so what 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 i mean is used for building cuts means now what will happen is we take an ellipsoid right so we you take it you design an ellipsoid okay and then you cut you make a cut there so you cut it in the front now that is your lens so that is your concave lens understood so that is your ellipsoid cut and now you have a parabola you take a small portion of that parabola that becomes your lens so that is how your lens get built and it has certain distinct curvature properties so depending on our design we can give the specification and they will make this and give us the lens good so ellipsoid parabola and also there is spherical you know we can do the same with the sphere you take a sphere you can cut a small portion of the sphere that becomes another lens so we are going to see the sphere is spherical system in the next slide okay so i'm hoping these are all things we need so now why i am uh, why i am telling all these points is so so because uh, next to class i'll show you like how we can use this to build a very simple imaging system and that is just a very fundamental imaging system and you can after that you know you, there are uh, aberrations and uh, uh, diffraction lot of other things all you know step by step we will do so now for designing a uh, any simple uh, imaging system you need all you need to know all this so that you can set this parameters you can just have to plug in these values in that software that we'll be showing and then you get a full fleshed imaging camera okay so we'll see that so now uh, coming to the last 
so it's two so you we have time so this is uh, the last topic uh, for the today's talk that is a refractive index of lens in camera image so the, we have studied the lens curvature property and now let us go to the refractive index of the lens so before i was talking this equation 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by f and I, I was telling that that equation is not self sufficient okay so that equation is not sufficient for um, this um, um, because it's not taking into consideration the refractive index and also the lens curvature so first i talked about the lens curvature property and now i'm talk, going to talk about the lens refractive index so which means now instead of calling this distance u i'm going to call it as u minus delta and instead of calling this distance v like before i am going to call this as v minus delta and now you have these two deltas right so this is this symmetry let us say and this delta is equal to this delta okay and that is how i got it now n is capital n is the refractive index of the lens so the plastic lens refractive index is capital n good and now i am going to i am going to I have shown the ellipsoid parabolic cut in the previous slide. Here, I am going to use a spherical cut. Okay, so I am going to use a spherical cut, and that is what is used in many because the spherical cut, the radius is the same. So the radius is same because when I when I cut a sphere, it becomes a circle, and then again I cut a circle, I get a lens. Good, you understood? You can visualize it. So it's like taking a tennis ball, and you cut the tennis ball. What you see, you see, you uh, know, you see a circle, and then you divide that circle into two. Then you get two lenses, something like that. So, um, yeah. So this is based on the spherical system. This is your radius r. So both ellipsoid and parabolic. Another reason is both of them can be approximated into a sphere. So that is why we are sticking to the here and another advantage second advantage is the uniform radius so this uh, makes because what is the ellipse equation ellipse equation is i don't know parabola i know it is uh, y y equal to 4ax y square equal to 4x something like that uh, so uh, so i uh, so there are the, these equations uh, sphere equation is simpler compared to the, these two but there are designs with ellipsoid so i just don't think that we have to use only sphere you can use ellipsoid designs you can use uh, par uh, this uh, parabolic designs also for your system so now this is i'm calling this as my radius r okay so this is my radius r and then this is a perpendicular drawn from this point and now my delta is i'm calling this as the delta Okay, because I am going to use this, I am going to cut this for the lens, right? I am going to cut two of this and join together and I get this one. So that is what this delta is. Okay. So this is my, this, this distance is delta. See, that is what this is. So what I am showing here is, this is a big thing and we are going to cut this and we are going to make this lens. So that is why we are seeing this here. And this distance, this total distance is R. And this small distance is delta, and this small distance is L. And now what I can say, my equation is R is equal to delta plus L. Good. Okay. Now let's come to this side. So I'm going to call this height H from the horizontal axis to the lens tip. And then I'm going to project, I'm going to draw two lines. Okay, let me do in a different color. Okay. And I'm going to okay, permit like theory. What is it? Okay, quickly. I don't want to go too much into it. Maybe in another webinar I'll talk about Fermat's theorem. So Fermat was telling uh, one thing. So Fermat was what Fermat was theory is. Uh, let this from this point to this tip be d1, and from this tip to this point be d2. They are the, they are the distance. So Fermat like theory states that that d1 plus d2. So here. The light is going around the lens, and in this case, the light is going through the lens, right? 
so the light can go light can go inside light can go through the lens and the light can go around the lens the fermat light theory says that both are the same because the d1 plus d2 is a longer path right the distance from uh, the d the, the distance d1 plus d2 may look longer but uh, the distance you know the, the penetrating the lens is going to slow down the light so in the first case d1 plus d2 the light is not entering the lens it is just going around the lens in the second case or in the center the center of the lens the light is fully penetrating the lens so the fermat's light theory the fermat's light theory states that both these are the same so that is another property of lens so we are talking about lens properties so what are the lens properties that we have seen today the first one is that the lens will whenever a ray hits parallel it will get converged to the focal point that is the first one and whenever the light ray goes through the focal point and hits the lens it gets diverted parallelly so these are the two things you know ray guiding then the third one i can include in that too is the fermat's light theory a light penetrating through the center of the lens reaches the image in the same time as the light going around the lens so in this case this distance is d1 plus d2 and the light going through the center this distance is u minus delta plus delta plus delta plus v minus delta so fermat's light theorem states that this distance and this distance are the same only thing here is instead of just 2 delta i have put 2 delta n so n is the refractive index of the medium so here all are considered the lens curvature property so this is the lens curvature property and this is the refractive index so this is going to give us a very nice equation that can be used for designing any of the optical cameras okay. so that is a, that is based on the fermat's equation we have this Okay, and what does it mean? Light traveling through a medium and light traveling around the medium take the same amount of time. Okay, so when I say time, you you must have this question should come to mind, sir. You are talking d1 and d2. You told d1 plus d2. So and you are telling d1 is distance and d2 is distance, but you are telling here time. So what is time? Time is distance by velocity. So t is equal to distance by velocity. So here it is a light, so velocity of light. So that is c, c equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. And that is the same because here also the medium is light, here also it is a light. So everywhere you can put divide by c, divided by c, that will give you the time. So it doesn't matter. So this is the Fermat theorem. Light traveling through the medium and light traveling around the medium takes the same amount of time. Will, there's there's plenty fermat's like it's very he has proposed postulated a lot of yeah, hypothesis on light probably if time is there uh, in other webinars we you know we will definitely give uh, one or two theorems and uh, because we have after this we will have a design so we are only talking you know the lectures are mostly from the design perspective so this will help you in designing something the next lecture will help you in designing something Whereas Fermat's theory was mostly, you know, it is theoretical perspective. So let us see how, uh, you know, how it uh, we have. So this is time is distance by velocity. And what is uh, through is it goes through the center of this lens. Around means it goes around the lens. All right. Now, this is our uh, refractive index of lens in camera image. Now, coming to the next slide, we'll take this equation, the Fermat's based on the Fermat's theory and then uh, d1 plus d2 and then time is distance by velocity of light we have this and this is something we have drawn in the previous slide and now what is pi d1 okay so pythagoras theorem so the d1 is so this is my hypotenuse h this distance is u minus you know this is u because i'm talking about the center so this the, the uh, perpendicular is at the center so d1 is h square plus u square and d2 is h square plus v square good the d1 and d2 so we are deriving that 1 by u plus 1 by v formula so we are deriving it again 
but this equation will that has this will take into consideration all the factors and this is a solid equation that we can use in our designs so optics approximation so the approximation that i'm going to show you so the pythagorean theorem gives us that root of h square plus u square and now we are going to put in some approximation this is an optics approximation i have not no, i have not seen it in any of the other text where it is used like uh, it's like they say like this is the approximation and hereafter everything i uh, know it's going to be used in this manner so after that in all the derivations they have followed this approximation so that is why i'm calling it as an optics approximation and this is uh, given as this so h square plus u square square root is given you know i'm taking the u square common outside and this becomes when i take u square common 1 plus h square by u square the whole power 1 by 2 and now i apply this 1 by 2 to this powers so it becomes u and the approximation here is this 1 by 2 becomes 1 plus this square root is given as 1 plus h square by 2 u square that is the approximation that we are using in this and in everywhere wherever because in a, in the lens a lot of times we need to use the pythagoras theorem because whenever you have a lens you draw a perpendicular and then you have an object then you then directly you get a right angle triangle and when you have a right angle triangle you can easily apply this pythagoras theorem and the approximation we have here is u plus h square by 2u so which means the square root of u square by h square becomes u plus h square by 2u this is the approximation that we are going to follow so which means the first approximation is d1 and the second approximation becomes d squared plus h squared becomes v plus h squared by 2 this is equal to d good so now d1 and d2 has been derived good now what else is there so we'll substitute we'll just put this d1 and d2 in this equation because here also we have it in uv terms but here we have in d1 and d2 but now we have made it into uv terms so let's put and maybe i'll draw a line here showing you know this side is the uh, you know, previous uh, computation this is the current computation then uh, you just uh, cancel it out then see what it comes you get in this manner all right okay now this is the equation that we got now what is delta <coughs> so we had uh, made this equation delta plus l equal to r because that was the spherical approximation right delta is r minus l and again we have a right angle here so which means i can write my l to be what l to be r square minus h square this is h right so i'm yeah so this is my height because this is the lens i'm telling that i'm going to cut this and i'm going to use it as the lens so this the lens that you are seeing in the previous slide as, is coming from this spherical surface so that means this height has to be the same so this is now r minus l l is r square minus h square here again pythagorean theorem so i'm gonna make that optics approximation and our optics approximation is telling me that this is going to be r minus h square by 2r excellent so that will cancel out r and then i'm going to get just h square by 2r that is my delta so i'm going to plug this delta in this equation then let us see what do i get h square by 2r n minus 1 good so now we are closing in on our equation our optical camera optical imaging equation that sums up all the characteristics will come to this 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 2 by r into n minus 1 and that is your 1 by f so before where it was just 1 by f now i am having 2 by r into n minus 1 the r is the curvature so it tells about the lens curvature change the r so i make this a different r I get a different shape change the r i get every time i get you know depending on the r it's just like i said the power of your glasses the eye glasses you wear so just change the r you get different different curvature shapes and then change the n n is the refractive index so that is the thickness of the plastic so when i say n is one the, it's it's a, like it's a, it's a thin plastic and when is n is 10 it's going to be a very thick plastic so depending on the 
uh, thickness of the plastic, your refractive index N will also vary. So now we have some control over the design. So I know that, okay, I can choose R and I can choose N and I can choose, I can get a lens. Now I change my R, I change my N, I get a different lens. And now I use these two lens. Now I, I want to see what my image looks like. So this way you can, this equation is a very, very important equation for optical imaging. So we can model our cameras, we can model our designs after this equation. So you can apply this, you, know, you can choose few lenses by varying this R and N and calculating the object distance, focal distance, the image distance. You have a lot of uh, uh, things you know, in your hands now to build an optical imaging camera. Good. So I think that is um, our conclusion for this class. And today, what was the topic? So just to remind you, we were, talk, we were here to talk about lens, focus, and convergence for cameras. And I'm, pre, I'm presuming, and I, I'm assuming that we have done exactly that. And we, I probably, uh, if you have listened from the start of the lecture, you should have, um, you should have an idea of what a lens is, how lens surface affects images, uh, what is focus, and how the focusing happens, the convergence we have spoken, focal point we have spoken, and also the convergence. So how important convergence is and uh, what are the things uh, to do with it. And uh, these equations are important because we are, um, you know, for those who are doing research in optics, this will all be very much needed. So I think uh, with that, uh, it's 245, so it's good. 243, okay, we can close the uh, talk and I can take one or two questions and then we can, uh, uh, yeah, and then I can go for lunch. I have not had lunch yet, so thank you. Yeah, I have a demo, okay. I totally forgot. I told you guys, uh, I, I prepared a small demo for you. Yes, so the demo is uh, shown here. Uh, what you're gonna see here is a, a camera system. So let me uh, just, uh, designed on using uh, this, uh, what, are, what, are the, what are the concepts? Because I'm also new as you guys in this optics. So I'm, I also started just recently in optics. I'm um, So I'm also learning and doing and uh, making a lot of things. So hopefully soon we'll have some good uh, productive output. So now uh, if you see, Now, uh, if you see this, so there is, okay. So this is a uh, typical, you know, this is an automated uh, design and it is, this is a camera design. So I've taken this as a camera design, uh, which is uh, pre, you know, pre available in our software. And if you see this, this is a lot of lenses are there. So the, the different shapes, okay, just leave. But this is all you know, for focusing for, you can see that what happens is, a light is coming so this is exactly this is a red wavelength so it is coming and it is you can see the direction is changing and also the velocity will change and then uh, somehow it's getting converged to this point and this is what we need to find how you know how a light can be directed and how a light can be made to converge at a certain point and when you do that proper so you may see you may think it is quite easy to do it it is not it is not because one you may have this focus and you may have these two out of focus your image is still going to look at uh, what you call degraded so you need this is a green wavelength and this is a blue wavelength all three must be in synchronous and all three must happen here and then if you use just one or two lens if you remove okay this lens is there that is why the focus is not there i'm going to remove few of the lenses then you, again your quality will be because the light Whenever it passes through just a few lens, you will again you will get the resolution will be very light. The spot diagram will be very weak. The there are many so we just this this is something we need to learn. And uh, what we have learned today is enough to just build a simple model, uh, just like this. And this is a very simple system and get an image. So you can use this to send an object. You can uh, take a sample object in the software and you can put it and then you will see the image and you will see that image is clear or not how is the quality how is the all the parameters you can um, check to uh, what you want to judge the uh, camera quality so whatever your build is it good or not all that can be done 
Okay, good. So thank you. So that is the demo I wanted to show today. I hope the lecture was informative. So if you have any questions now, uh, maybe one or two questions I'll, we can take uh, and then uh, we can, we can close. Thank you.